today's video we're going to talk about threading. First thing I want to go over is the correct threading setup at the lathe and we're going to be looking at the compound angle. Now I think the simplest way to teach someone to thread is to set the compound angle at 30 degrees off of the center line of the cross slide. So what that means is we have our lathe chuck We have our cross slide, and then we have our carry, sorry, our compound. Now, the 30 degrees that I'm talking about is right here, it's this angle. So, this is the compound. This is where your, your tool post will be, and then your threading tool, like so. So if this rectangle was straight on in line with the cross slide, we would have a zero degree angle, but we rotate it 30 degrees of rotation. Now what I found is a lot of people get confused and they rotate it until the markings <clears throat> go to the 30 degree mark on our 360 degree um, ring that's inscribed on our, our cross lines. That's not what we're trying to do. We're trying to go from straight on and then rotate it 30 degrees. That 30 degrees is going to give us the 60 degree included angle, which is what our tip is, the, our threading tool tip that we've ground. And if we continue and we make our angle to be 60 degrees of rotation from our cross slide, what we will end up with is a thread that instead of looking like this, that's a normal thread profile, we'll end up with a thread profile that's shallow and then sharp and then shallow and then sharp because we will be feeding in with the compound and unless the compound is at the correct angle, you're not going to get the correct thread form. So, last thing you should always do before you start threading is look and ask yourself, is the side of my compound at the same angle as my threading tools tip? If the answer is no, stop, come get me, I'll help you. Or make the correction yourself. So now we're out at the lathe. I have my, my threading tool held in a tool holder and I have my thread grinding gauge or fish gauge ready to help me get set up. First thing I need to do is find the center line height of my tool and for this setup I'm going to go ahead and just level it out with the, the tip of my center. Now when I'm doing this, I'm going to be extra cautious so I don't actually run my t tip up into my center and break it off. That's not going to do me any good. And then always remember to tighten the tool post. It's very often that a student will uh, be having trouble with their cut. They'll have some chatter and then I'll come over and one of the first things I notice is that they have not tightened the clamping action on their tool post. Now I'm going to show you how to use the, the thread gauge to properly orientate your tool. So what I'm going to be doing is holding the side of the gauge against the part and then orientating the tip of my threading tool to the gauge. I slide a a clean towel underneath this so maybe it'll help with contrast for the camera. Try to get a good view for you. Now let's see how close it was um, before I make any adjustments. So I cautiously bring the tool tip in and it's actually 
pretty good. Now you can see this gauge is, uh, well, it's kind of cheap. And I can tell actually on this side here, the notch, um, it's not uniform. So this other side's looking better, so I'm gonna go with that. And I'm really happy with what I see. Now, if I wasn't happy with what I saw, I would just loosen the tool post, let it float around, center the tip of the tool, or orientate the tip of the tool, and then I would clamp everything down. But that's how you align the tool. So now I just need to set the gearbox and adjust the RPM. This lathe right here has a pretty easy to follow um, grid. So I want 14 threads per inch. So I know I'm gonna be in U, M, and then B and D. So I'm in B, I'm in D. U and M. Now, also at this point, I should mention that the compound is 30 degrees of rotation from being in line with the cross slide. And on this lathe, it actually happens to be at the mark that would be at 60. So this is a lathe right here where a lot of times a student would turn the compound until the mark on the compound lines up with the 30 that's on the cross slide. Well, that would be 60 degrees of rotation, which would make a 120 degree included angle thread instead of this pointy 60 degree included angle thread. I have the uh, gearbox set for the right threads per inch. I'm gonna adjust my spindle RPM to be at about 100. The reason I'm gonna go with 100 RPMs is the rotation of the chuck is gonna affect how fast my thread chasing dial is spinning. So the thread chasing dial is over here and I'm gonna turn on the spindle. And then now you see The thread chasing dial is rotating. So now what I want to do is I'm going to turn off the spindle for a second. And in order to get that dial to move, I'm actually going to move the carriage to the left and to the right. So that way the, the spindle is not turning while I'm talking to you. All right. Let's talk about what this little dial does. What it helps us do is engage our half nut in the same location or timing every single pass we make of the, the threading operation. Now when we cut our threads, our tool doesn't just make one pass and then we have a finished thread, it takes multiple passes. So at the start of every pass, we have to wait till our marking on our thread chasing dial in this example, let's go with number one. It'll be rotating around, and then I will push down on my half nut, and as it rotates around, the half nut will, and watch my hand, see how it falls down and it locks into position, and that will engage the half nut. Now, if my spindle was turning right now, the carriage would be feeding towards the headstock at my 14 threads per inch, because that's what I'm gonna, thread here is a one inch diameter, 14 threads per inch um, thread. So it's very important that we do not miss our mark on the thread chasing dial. That's why we're gonna go ahead and thread at a lower RPM because if I, this is a, this example here, if I turn on the spindle and on this lathe, right now I'm going 123 RPMs. But on this lathe, I can actually increase up to 300. So at 300 RPMs, you see how much faster that little dial's spinning. 
can turn it back down. Well, when that little dial is spinning that fast, it is a lot harder to press down on your half nut and get it to engage and have your markings line up perfectly. If they're not perfectly lined up, then your threading tool will not follow the path that it took on the previous pass. You do not want that to happen. It will wipe out your threads off your part, making a piece of scrap. So there's zero room for error in this operation.